So, um, I'm still hurting over that whole comment. Did it hurt your heart like it hurt my heart? Let's discuss. The episode before this one really bothered me because I didn't understand why Issa was so upset at Daniel for releasing his seed in her eye, right? Um, I was just like, isn't that what couples do? But I talked to my really good girlfriend who's a nurse and she was just like, Nikki, that stuff is dangerous. Like it stings. I talked to um, a guy friend who was just like, listen, my eye got messed up. <laughs> He was just like, so it's a really big thing. Like, semen burns the eye. I had no idea. But apparently there's like this fluid around the actual sperm that protects it. And so in that fluid is like a lot of acidity. So it's just basically like somebody spraying. And you guys probably already know this. So it's basically like somebody spraying like, um, uh, not salt water. Salt water or, um lemon juice in your eye so that was like so it did burn and it was like another one of my girlfriends like it's just really disrespectful like let me know and I'm like he did say something but anyway so because that was bothering me and I, I talked to other a few other people who were just like yeah that was wrong I didn't understand why like her and Molly were like trying to fight him and I'm just like I mean <laughs> well, isn't that what it's supposed to do anyway <laughs> moving on. Molly is falling for a married man sis no like how how oh my gosh what I what I do like is the juxtaposition of like Molly being mad at her parents for cheating and her mom for staying when her dad cheated on her mom but she's becoming like the other woman in like a married relationship because guys I'm telling you mark my words Dro is not in an open relationship he is not he is just Foul. So I had to think about this entire conversation with Daniel and Issa because she finally accepts his phone call after he's been calling her for a very long time. And I had to think about it because like I said in the beginning, I didn't know why she was so angry at him. Like I didn't get it until I talked to my friend. And so like I understand, right? I understand why she's upset with him, but I just don't understand why she's upset with him to this magnitude. So finally she, she accepts his phone call and they talk or whatever and they like hash it out they seem to be in a good place and then he says to her well now you kind of understand how i feel so it makes it seems it appears you gotta watch it a few times it appears as if he released his seed into her eye to get back at her for basically using him to cheat on Lawrence and then like dumping him once she tried to fix it with Lawrence again. So he just felt used and thrown away, right? So it appears as if he is saying, well, I did that because you kind of deserved it. So Issa is getting upset. She's just like, did you do that on purpose, my nigga? Because they love saying my nigga. Is that the, L I don't know if that's an LA thing, but I'm just like, ugh. I'm, I'm from Philly. Like we say nigga in a different way. So maybe, I don't know. But she gets upset by that and hangs up on him. I watched it a few times because I was just like, oh, damn you, you are so petty. How could you do that to her, right? I had my own feelings about it. I watched it again and then I was just like, oh, okay, I'm on Daniel's side. I don't agree with Issa in this situation because she was wrong, right? She cheated. She used two men to make herself feel good. And these both of these dudes are heartbroken, right? I don't believe that Daniel intentionally did that to her to humiliate her. I believe that it just happened in the moment he couldn't contain himself. Girl, you was doing a good job. He ain't know what to do. So I think that that's what happened. But I felt like he was still pretty hurt by how she threw him away after they had sex. And he probably just used that comment to like get, make a dig at her, get back at her. But I don't think he planned it. I don't think he calculated it. And I just feel like Issa in this situation overreacted. Oh, then we get to this messy dinner. Can I tell you, Dro? Oh, he is the worst. Has been following my bachelorette reviews. Let me tell you something. I have learned through watching Rachel that Spanish, Spanish-speaking men, or just just uttering like Spanish words to a black woman gets us every time because the way Brian put it on Rachel with that Spanish is the same way Dro hit Molly. Because as soon as he sees Molly at this dinner, he drops his Spanish on her and she just you know she's weak in the knees she can't get herself together because she got this afro latino interested in her y'all gotta leave them afro latinos alone black american sisters we don't know how to handle them they mess up our mind leave them alone huh. so lauren shows up at this dinner this birthday dinner and this is what i'm going to say to people who um who are like your best friends and you get in a relationship and they become friends with that person as well. When I break up with that person, so do you. You don't invite my ex to the birthday dinner. 
Like, you just don't do that. But I feel like Issa was a, uh, uh, I feel like Issa was a good sport. She accepted the whole thing that Lawrence was coming. But I mean, if you watch this dinner, it was so uncomfortable. And I was just like, my friends better not do that to me. Listen, I break up with him. So do you. You block him on Facebook and all that stuff. Y'all are not friends. I don't want to see you talking to him. I take him out of the group thread. You know what I mean? Like, it, I'm your best friend. You met him through me. Like, I, I brought him into the group and I take him out. So she's better than me because I wouldn't have showed up to that dinner. I probably would have got rid of all them friends. No, I wouldn't. I love my friends, but I would have been pissed off. So then we get the confrontation that we all have been waiting for because Issa and Lawrence have been making eye contact to each other the entire time. It's so awkward. You can cut the tension with the knife because the thing is you can't just throw away five years and think that you'll be okay in front of this person. There's still so much history there. So anyway, um, they end up, she ends up leaving because she, she can't take it anymore. Like she's frustrated. She's disgusted by him and she just can't take it. So she gets up and leaves and she walks out and I think she tries to get an Uber or whatever. And then Lawrence goes out to after her because he knows that him bringing somebody else here was wrong. So he go, although he knew, that's why I'm saying about Lawrence. He wants to be a good guy, but he's not. He knew what he was doing. He knew that with her Issa, especially in front of her friends. Not only did he want to hurt her, he wanted to embarrass her. And that's a work. Ugh. Anyway, so he goes out there after her or whatever, and Issa's already heated, so she just lays into him, and she lays in him about, you know, him being depressed, and she's just like, how could you do that to me after I supported you for all of these years? You bring somebody to embarrass me in front of my girlfriends, and then she hits him hard. She hits him hard, but he goes below the belt, because she hits him about his app, which is his baby, and she's just like, I haven't heard anything about that app. I haven't gotten anything from Weeble Wobble or whatever it is, and he was just like, well, you know, well, you've been spending so much time being a hoe and the way he said ho it punched me in my heart like I was on the couch and I was like oh you know what I mean like it hit me hard the way he said it to her in her face like everything in her just crumbled because this is the dude that she loves right and he's calling her a hoe with so much guttural and passion listen I like to have died when he said that. I, I couldn't get myself together. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, she deserves better. So I started cussing Lawrence out because, you know, I'm in this scene as well. But I was just like, wow. Um, that was the confrontation we were all waiting for, but it was a confrontation we did not expect. So our girl Molly, who was caught up in the rapture of love with a married man, she's at this dinner and Dro, who was so grimy. This is how I know he cheats on his wife all the time. Because he's so chill with his wife sitting right there and then having Molly right there. And he's like still working at both of them. Making eyes at her, making eyes at his wife. He is so grimy and so dirty. And the thing that bothers me the most about him is that he will put somebody who he grew up with in this terrible position. So the relationship that he had with Molly, the relationship that their families have with each other, the relationship that he had that he has with her brother doesn't even matter to him. Like he's willing to risk all of that for his penis. He's a terrible, terrible dude. So anyway, Molly gets up and follows Dro to the bathroom to like talk about their situation because she's just uncomfortable. Because Molly's a good person. She's just uncomfortable with it. She believes Dro, but I feel like deep down the side she knows he's playing it, but she wants him so bad. But you know, she's just like, I can't do this. This situation isn't working with us anymore. And then Dro, you know, Rico Suave her and and then the next thing you know, he's banging her in the bathroom. And let me tell you something. I know that, you know, uh, people are sexual beings. But my God, today, put more respect on your vagina. Do not let a man have sex with you in a public restroom. It is the filthiest place on the face of, this, face of this earth. I couldn't even get my life with that scene because I was so disgusted. I was just like, oh my goodness, they are banging around, you know, stranger fecal matter. I was just so grossed out. Anyway, he bangs her and when he's done, he fixes himself up and he looks at her and he says, why don't you just hold back a minute and then come out after I'm gone? That sounds like a cheater. He's cheating, Molly. You are the side chick. <sighs> this is how we get here. I said we, like I've been in this situation. <laughs> Never girlfriends this is why you need good girlfriends so molly comes out the bathroom after realizing i think i think at this point she kind of gets that she's a side chick her weave is all like a ruckus because dro put it on in that public restroom it wasn't a men's restroom oh 
Ciao. Anyway, she comes out and uh, as she comes out, she sees Issa standing there and they just have this unspoken moment between girlfriends. Man, let me tell you something. Ladies, don't ever let a dude mess up your relationship with your girlfriends because I'm telling you, you're going to need them ladies for the rest of your life. Even if you got sisters, you still going to need your girlfriends for the rest of your life. They know you so well. They hold you up through so, through so many situations because even a scene with Molly and Issa, they didn't, they didn't need to say a word. We all got it. And they had this great moment. And Issa like fixes Molly up and she takes off her tag. And Issa was just like, I was going to return that. It was just a really cute and real moment that I think got to a lot of our hearts because a lot of uh, girls on Twitter was just like oh my goodness this is why I have my girlfriends like we all could relate to that moment so ah uh, I love this show and I've said it before and I will always say it I do not agree with Issa cheating on Lawrence however Lawrence was wrong Lawrence is wrong in this situation. Yes, she cheated and yes, she hurt you, but he just went so below the belt. You know how you're in an argument with somebody, especially if after you've just broken up with somebody and you want to get back together. You don't hit so low just yet. You stay in a little surface kind of argument because you want to let that person know how you feel and you want to let that person know there's still passion that I still care. So you don't go to these insults that will like cut the person deep. But Lawrence is just such... A douchebag. I've been saying that all week. I don't know why. I don't know what Caucasian girlfriends I've been hanging around, but it is what it is. He just being such a douchebag that he just, he cut her so low that I can't defend, I can't defend her actions. Like I can't, I can't defend him in this one. And I've always been, you know, team Lawrence because I've realized he had a broken heart, but he's just starting to show he's a terrible guy this season. Disappointed, Lawrence. Disappointed. Ends with Issa going back home to her apartment, and she sends she sees a rent e increase on her door. And let me tell you something. I don't is Issa right from um L A or whatever. If she's from LA or she moved here like a few years ago or whatever, she's lived here for a long time, whatever it is, this girl has lived this LA life because let me tell you something, that rent increase is real. Don't move out here. They increase the rent yearly. You got to find the right spot so that you can survive out here. They just keep on pushing out poor people, even middle class. Like, I don't know how I'm still surviving out of Los Angeles. Barely. Pray my strength in the Lord. But it's just that rent increase thing, that got my soul. That I was like, oh my God, that was me two years ago. Anyway, she gets the rent increase. And after everything that happened with her and Lawrence, how this dude that she loves called her a hoe. Like that's still sitting with her. Then she goes in and she sees her burnt wall that she had that she that the fire from the from the fire that was started when she was trying to impress him, trying to get back together with him. And she just loses it and starts tearing up her place. Now, I want to say this. The cast is like late 20s, early 30s, I believe, right? That's how I know. I know a lot of them are already. I know. I know the whole cast is at this point is in their 30s to late 30s and they're playing younger people. I get that. But what age are they supposed to be? Because I can understand tearing up your stuff. I've had a couple of moments where I've torn up a dorm room. You know what I mean? But that's normally the dorm finals when I ain't had no sleep and nothing to eat. And I have just been living off of Red Bulls. Right? But not being a grown adult, tearing up stuff that you've paid for. I just didn't understand that. I was just like, how old are you supposed to be in this show? Because I'm like, aren't you supposed to? thinking like 29 I don't know I just feel like 29 year old Nikki would have never torn her stuff up like that now you know uh 19 year old Nikki yep I would have thrown a textbook you know through a computer shelf or something like that but not 29 year old Nikki knowing that I gotta replace that and I ain't got no money anyway nah but anyway Issa tears up her whole apartment because she's just overcome with emotion and that's where it ends and next week is the season finale i'm so disappointed i hope um the show has been approved for another season i don't know how it works over there at hbo but listen hbo this show needs to be longer it's a really really good show and it has a core audience so um i hope next season we get a little bit more and um, i hope you guys stay up to watch the uh season finale because i will be and hopefully i can get my review up a little bit quicker but you know life is busy <laughs> i'm trying to be like Issa, okay anyway if you like what you see here please like comment subscribe and share and i will see you for the following episode the season finale of insecure bye guys